so a few days ago I decided I wanted to create some meteor craters in Cinema 4D and I instantly wanted to jump to World Machine but instead I thought I'm gonna do the whole thing in Cinema 4D it might not look as cool but I ended up with some pretty cool results I created three different renders and I'm gonna show you how to do that today it was all done with spheres and deformers it's pretty basic stuff but it was mainly getting the displacements right and it it all came together i did use octane but you can follow with any other render or default cinema 4d i just used octane for you know light and texturing it didn't carry out the project whatsoever um so this is the first one i did you can see it's pretty basic you can really see how it was done with a collision deformer and with the second render i knew i wanted to kick it up a notch um the first one i kind of had this theme where i wanted to make it look like a moon photo from the 60s or whatnot and the second one i was like i'm going to concentrate much more on the displacement itself so i didn't actually texture it what you're looking at is just displacement diffuse material it came out looking really cool i was really happy with this one and um the third one was um, basically the same. I wanted to create a kind of icy, wintry uh, feel, and then I um, went a bit crazy with the the spheres and the Android uh, password uh, looky thing, and uh, they both ended up coming out really cool. I think they think the first one's the weakest, but they I, I was happy with the results. So you'll be able to come out with results like that in very short amount of time. Is I kid you not, very easy. Um, so let's get into this. So now inside of Cinema 4D, the first thing I did was I made a plane. Now this wasn't compulsory to uh, how I actually did it. You could still get the same results, but I was using the plane. Uh, it's hard to explain right now, but I'll explain later. Um, next thing then was I actually I used a platonic because. The first, the first time I done it, I used a sphere. Second thing, I used a platonic. I thought it made the. I didn't want it to be so perfect, you know, and not using World Machine. A lot of stuff in Cinema 4D looks perfect. There's a lot of perfect edges and stuff. So, I um went out of my way to make sure that it wasn't perfect. Set the platonic as the collider. Now I didn't make it too big because then the shadows just become really messed up and when when we're displacing it you don't you don't really want that. And then we stick rod shading lines on. As you can see now I've already got a crater, so if you just wanted a crater, you can leave now. Well no, right. Here we go. Sphere. This is our crater, the sphere. Now the way if you look at the second one um you see here how i've got all these bits jagging up is this is the plane underneath the main hole here is the sphere i've just dropped in these bits pointing up is i was using a deformer on the plane and using spheres underneath that so the mesh was just flipping out and like jagging through and it just blended in with the displacements and it looked really nice it looked like you know this rock has grown around it for years and it ended up looking really cool um i'll set that to like 35 it's not really gonna matter make it editable come in your side view uh what get over from here Just UL, hold shift, click that because it doesn't um, doesn't always get the full ring, and then just delete it. Now we've got a half circle, and I'm gonna duplicate that just in case we need it later. And just start making it a bit bigger. Now, if you look at pictures of meteor craters, you see that I definitely tried to go for a bit in this one. Is they sort of like point up a bit, um, and then go down. And um, it's never just a flat surface edge. Um, so how we did that was it just UL, get that hold control, and uh, I brought that out like that. 
and bring it down a bit. Bring this up a bit more. So now we've got something happening. I've also made some um, microphone adjustments, so if I sound better in this tutorial, then that's why. Um, now, the displacements. I saw Rhett Dashwood, I think it was, uh, doing some cool stuff with these displacements, and he looked at this website called High Rise, and never heard of it, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. It's just these scans that this university did and there was displacements and you can see I've textured this one completely drained all the colour out of it. Uh, I wanted it to look like a you know like a sixties photo. Um but these ones the displacement isn't I didn't colour it, I just displaced it. Um I thought this one uh, looked like a Star Wars planet like crate or something. So I really like that. It looked kinda icy but salty but it, it looked really cool and I like that so that's just what we're going to do today with the displacements of course if you're in default C40 you can do these displacements just as easily of course displays I am going to attempt to use the one that I used um, in the second photo no I don't want HDR I don't think I put them in a folder, no I just left them hanging on my desktop uh, I think it was this one and I set it to 15 to start off with Now I did set these to cubic because I didn't want, um, I wasn't going into too, too much depth trying to get all the mapping perfectly and I knew that the camera was going to be pretty close and anything that did look weird in, you know, repeated textures, I, I would just um, sort out in Photoshop, but they are, you don't really notice them, so we'll just do that. Some textures are better than others, some you really see it, but as you can see here, you can't, you can't tell. I'm going to add in a daylight. Now what it did do is uh, sky color to black and sun color to white. And this ended up looking really cool. I'm going to add in a camera as well. Bump the sun size up. This is what I did for the original one. I did do it for the other two as well, though. Uh, and then set that to path tracing. And it started to look really cool very quickly. I'm going to set my uh, stuff here. I mean, you could always uh, you could definitely set this back if you want it. Yeah, not looking so good. Now HDRI to get rid of this weird look it's got going on right now. I mean, this is this is one hundred percent one of those renders where. It just it takes a lot of faffing about really. Um a lot of going back and forth. I used a nighttime HDRI in one of them, I think it could have been the second one, just to get the shadows. I can never look at HDRIs and be like, that's the one I want. I have to just bring them in and see what they do to the scene. Some people can just stare at them and be like, yep, yeah, 
That's the one I want. How can I do that? There we go. I like it now. Now, of course, I did play with. I'm gonna just make this smaller. I'm not gonna attach it here because I just I'm gonna be working a lot in this view. I'm bringing this up a bit. You can't see it. There we go. I did have in mind to create one of these renders and uh, create loads of different, you know, um, meteor creators, but that seemed to just be a bit of a pain to do. But you could definitely do that; uh, it wouldn't be too difficult. I'm not going to go too much into the texturing and lighting; just the main, the main um, basis of this. So now, add in another sphere, and you know, you don't have to keep all this centered you know, dot on in the middle, but it just makes it a hell of a lot easier. And here is when I start to do these rocks coming up through this plane, our original plane. Um, just make that a collider there, and we'll make it a bit smaller. You definitely 100% have to toy with this a little bit to get it where you want. Make the platonic a bit smaller. Because, you know, you're, you're tricking the mesh here. You're, you're not supposed to be doing this to the mesh. Um, so it's going to start getting annoyed with you. And that's when it starts to flip, flip out and... There we go. See, so we got one there now. Just duplicate it. Bring it in again. I am curious to try one of these in World Machine. Um, it would come off way better, but I was quite intrigued to see uh, how far I could get it in um, <laughs> in C4D itself, because you know some things you just have to resort to other softwares with. Definitely helps making this fears. Uh, much bigger. Um, as you can see, it's just all coming together really nicely. Now, the other thing I did do to make it look not so natural as I came into point mode, started selecting some of these. Try not to m make too much of a generic pattern. I also don't want it looking too artificial, you know. So you can see here now it's looking quite nice. You gotta be careful you don't know, grab any of the um the spheres the spheres um points. I did get rid of that but I can't remember how I did it. And I can't be bothered doing it right now. Well it's looking nice. I'll bring my camera in a bit. And 
voila you can see how easy it is and those displacements certainly help a lot um you can play around with it a lot you can get some really cool results doing this um you know i mean you look at the the first few i did and um they really came together nicely this one was probably the most fun to do um but at the same time it was my first attempt so i knew the second one was going to be a bit better um so it's definitely the best one and the third one i was just i don't know i was like you never see an android password on a mountain so there you go um yeah play around with it see what you can get and um i wanted to make this straight to the point not too much messing around or trying to get what i'm doing in the tutorial perfect because that's not the um that's not my uh, goal here it's to show you how i i um i achieved this and it is really really cool to be able to use collisions and displacement to gain something like this rather than doing an intense model or using world machine and porting the mesh over the height maps it's, it makes it so much more fun in a way um so i hope this helped straight to the point not too much messing around and there'll be more tutorials soon so thank you and i'll see you in the next one is a very clever arch criminal who must be put away another innocent victim